XRP had had a 40% pullback in the last three weeks, but things that seem to finally be turning. In this video, guys, we're going to dive into the world of XRP and talk about the technical analysis and what we might expect to see happen next. If you find this video useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, why not subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you'll be kept up to date with absolutely everything we do here. Right, with all that done and out of the way, let's dive into this technical analysis on XRP. So we're going to start things off with the weekly chart, guys, just to kind of go through what we've seen so far and what we might be looking forward to in the very near future. Here we can see there is that 40% pullback in the last three weeks. And again, this is pretty much courtesy of A, Bitcoin and B, what is going on over in China. The good news is things seem to be finally on a bit of a road of recovery. And we've got some pretty good news for today, I do believe. So overall, and nothing's uh, too bad on that kind of front. Now, when I zoom out and we actually just pull this down a little bit, we do have a Fibonacci retracement tool over here. This is the one that shows us our $16 price target or $15.91, just short of $16, coming in at about 1,500% in gains. Now, this scenario, I do think we have to see the lawsuit with uh, Ripple and the SEC completely closed out. And uh, as we have done with previous cases with the SEC, there's usually a big surge to the upside after the case is closed. And generally speaking, it doesn't matter if it's a win, a loss, or a settlement, or even if the token itself gets classed as a security. So for XRP here, um, if it were to be classed as a security, which I don't think it will. Um, if it does, then um, it doesn't really matter. We're still going to see that boost. What we basically need is clarity. Once you get clarity one way or another, things move up to the upside in a very nice way. And we also have to bear in mind the US are the only ones who are facing this kind of scenario. The rest of the world kind of see XRP as an exchange token or something to that effect, right? It has a lot of utility to it. So here in the UK, we call it an exchange token, not a security. And uh, if uh, the US do decide to actually call it a security, they will pretty much be left uh, behind and that's really not good for the US overall. So I'd like to think that they wouldn't hurt themselves in such a way, but you never know. Um, yeah, these things can go in lots of different directions, but I am confident that, uh, you know, Ripple are going to win the, the case. Uh, if they don't win, then I think they'll settle, although I don't think uh, settlement is something that they want to do. They're very confident in their case, and I think rightfully so. I mean, the SEC haven't exactly tried very hard, in my opinion. With all that being said, um, that's how we see this scenario happening, right? So once all that kind of nonsense is out of the way, uh, this is where we can start to see a good surge to the upside. 1500% is absolutely on the cards. Just look at Kick Interactive. The KIN token surged over 8000% since it was class of security. Um, so as you can tell, it doesn't matter whether it gets class of security or not. It's just a different way, different types of investors to actually get involved with it. Ultimately, there was a huge surge, even though it was a security. If you imagine what would happen if XRP is not classed as a security? Let that speculation kind of settle in a little bit. So that's how we get to that kind of level there. And again, this is not just plucking a number out of thin air, guys. It takes a Fibonacci extension level um, from the previous high of um, the previous bull run and the bear market low. And that gets us to that 4.236 extension of $15.91. Okay, so it's not just a number plucked out of the air with ran some random kind of metric. It is, uh, it's actually using a Fibonacci retracement tool based on previous all-time high, bear market low, and you get to $15.91. Really simple. You can draw that up yourselves if you want. Um, so 1,500% I think is pretty much achievable. And again, market cap is no barrier to $16 or to $15.91. Uh, market cap is basically your last sold price multiplied by your circulating supply, which does not represent the value of a cryptocurrency. It does not represent the liquidity of a cryptocurrency. It does not represent the amount of money that's flowed into a cryptocurrency. All it simply represents is the price. It represents the last sold price times the circulating supply. And a good example of this, guys, is the eyeball XRP, let's say at 17 cent down here. I did not buy it at 99 cent that it is today. But the market cap assumes that my XRP was bought at 99 cent. Okay, so actually that's wrong, right? We clearly know that I didn't buy it at 99 cent. And I imagine this is pretty much the same for most of you guys. Um, so we know that market cap is a very, you know, rough and ready calculation that's supposed to give you some kind of notion of value but actually it, it doesn't do that at all the price completely fluctuates so you can never liquidate it all in one go so you know it's not the amount of money that's in there you know it doesn't represent liquidity you know it does not represent a barrier 
to price discovery. There are two things that have to happen for us to see this level up here of $15.91. We have to see a squeeze on the supply and we have to see demand for the token or the coin. Uh, in the case of XRP, to get the squeeze on the supply, we need to have a lot of XRP holders who do not want to sell until certain price targets acquired. Or we have to see something, I don't know, let's say Flare Networks with smart contracts that lock up XRP, for example. There's lots of different reasons why XRP may get a squeeze on its supply. Okay, so with that squeeze on the supply, all the or the second ingredient that you need to really start to see the price surge is going to be the demand for the coin. So in this particular case, you would need to see a good settlement or uh, you know, win for the SEC lawsuit as an example. And uh, as a result, there'll be high demand for this coin. And obviously as a result of that, with a squeeze on the supply, high demand, the price would absolutely surge. So overall, I'm pretty confident. I don't think the uh, the SEC are gonna win. So the, the, the only thing that I can see the SEC willing to do would be settle. Whether or not Ripple want to settle is the other thing. Uh, I don't think, I mean, if they have come out and said they don't want to, so as a result of that, you might end up with a scenario where, um, well, actually we just go all the way um, and the unfortunate thing with that might be that we might miss the bull run right um but that being said i still think you're going to surge regardless if you're inside the bull run or not um obviously the percentages may change a little bit that might make this a little bit harder to see um so you know we'll watch out for those kind of things but overall the weekly chart here is looking pretty good and of course we can see that we have started to pull back on our stochastic rsi um, and again you know this is actually a pretty interesting location we have been down here before before surging up to the upside so overall everything's looking pretty good and when we jump down into our daily view this shows us the most recent price action and we get another Fibonacci retracement tool okay this one this one takes current performance into consideration this takes the high that we had up here in April and the low that we had during our fourth wave correction for many of those altcoins this comes in on the 23rd of June we had a double tap down here in July as well as you can see there was good support being found and then we are surged up right now this performance from here and here the high from May the low from June uh, this then shows us the current performance could reach so i.e nothing has changed with the SEC or um, you know Ripple and that case continues all the way through and we see the end of the bull run without settlement without uh, winning or closing the case then I think the current performance is indicating that we should see a $6.68 range for XRP right so that's kind of like a you know my worst case case scenario based on performance that we've seen so far the next leg of the bull run would just take it up to about six dollars 68 which would be shorter than obviously we would like it to go but again something that i think is uh, very much achievable considering everything that's been going on with xrp so overall i'm pretty confident uh, with this one there's um you know not too much to really say that isn't achievable with xrp at this point there's lots of volatility in the space it is a crypt uh, top cryptocurrency and i think a lot of people will be speculating on uh, Ripple winning the case at some point during the next few months and as a result I think we're going to see a significant push to the upside. Current XRP holders are definitely holding on tight. They know the value of XRP and they are not willing to sell at discounted rates. So you already have the squeeze on the supply. So I think as the next few months we'll see a nice steady rise with this one up to at least $6.68 and if we do close the case then I think we're going to get a nice surge to the upside too. Overall we can see that we were rejected from the 618 of the Fibonacci. Then this is where Bitcoin really pulled us down and then obviously we had the um, all the stuff going on in China's real estate market pulling us down further. We did surge up yesterday and we took a nice little area. Um, again, this was the latter part of yesterday and we moved up nicely. And uh, today is also looking pretty interesting. So overall, there was a downward trend. We've got nice bouncing going on here on this line. And we look, are looking now to try to get above our $1.7 area. Okay, so overall, um, everything was actually looking pretty good, right? And um, we can see that we have had good progress so far on this uh, you know, recovery. So right now we are moving a needle back from the oversold area area on our daily chart that we were down here we're moving back up to the upside and, and if we can continue this get on over our support lines and continue this growth we could basically re repeat what we had seen over here with a nice steady rise to the upside and um, so overall we are looking for recovery as we exit uh, the month of September and go into October in a really strong way it's at this point we're going to jump over to the Avida IO dashboard and just talk about the underlying sentiment for XRP what is the underlying value of XRP overall and what is this artificial intelligence and machine learning telling us in an unbiased way here we can see that we have a B1 rating cryptocurrency overall so XRP hasn't changed in the last 24 hours in terms of its overall rating but we can go down a little bit lower and we can see that the fear and greed index has gone to c1 we can see this is actually rising up a little bit and therefore the sentiment is changing it is still fearful 
but it's not as fearful as it has been in recent days. So that's a pretty good and interesting tell. So we are looking to rise this back up as we move into neutral and then back to greedy. Here we can see the AMI had ratio is an A2, no problems with liquidity. The moving averages still have a little bit of work to do, a C2 rating. So again, as we continue to move up in a good recovery, we can start to see that the moving averages will start to get better. The peak end value demand up at B2. So again, no problems there. The profitability is up at an A1 rating, not a problem, the best it can be. And we do have the sharp ratio at an A2 rating. Again, we bounced off our 50 day average here, and this is indicating risk rewards, right? So the risk of holding XRP versus the uh, rewards of holding XRP. Currently, they're in our favor at an A2 rating. So overall, there isn't anything majorly wrong other than the fact that there is still a little bit of fear in the market and obviously the moving averages need to be corrected. Overall, everything else from liquidity, profitability, sharp ratio is looking pretty good. So nothing really major to report from evide.io, but if you're not uh, signed up, there is a link in the description below. It's free to sign up. Sign up to evide.io and you'll be able to get a bigger insight into your cryptocurrencies. So I do really recommend it. This artificial intelligence machine learning has been right more times than I can count in terms of seeing changes in liquidity and then representing that change in liquidity into your charts, i.e. the price has fallen, for example. So overall, everything on uh, evide.io is looking good. Do sign up and I think you'll be very impressed with what you find. Let's jump back down to our charts here and go into our hourly view. And this is where we start to see some really interesting things occurring. Okay, so here we can see that there was a nice little uh, buy zone area that had formed. Uh, this is an area that I was pointing out uh, a little while ago that I was thinking that we're going to come into. And then we're looking to try to bounce off this area here. This actual trend line has held up nicely. And this is where we started to get a lot of traction to the upside. Okay, so basically we're coming down here. We're highlighting this area because we're wicking into it. We weren't staying into it. We were losing the support line down here at 88. We did actually say that we we're looking to come down and find the bounce from the 88. We're looking to hold it if we didn't hold it then we we're looking to come down a little bit lower and we actually bounced from our trend line here which is good and then we started to get a good traction back to the upside that sentiment was really good for us if we throw on the volume here you can see this right we can see that the volumes were growing uh, on the way down and then we started to grow to basically reduce our volumes on the way um, up right so the sentiment wasn't wasn't good around here and it could have been better at this point then we actually got a bit of a change we actually started to increase the volume just here as we push the price up. Slight pullbacks and uh, basically now we are still losing that volume overall. Okay, and that's as we are now trading sideways around here, finding the resistance level at 102. So right now we're actually in a pretty good position. We are looking to continue this kind of sideways trade. We might lose a little bit of momentum around here as in just drop the price down ever so slightly uh, and then look to basically gear it back up again. This drop in volume that we're seeing, this is actually helping protect the price right now. And then what we want to do is want to increase the volume once we're in the oversold area so that we can use the over, oversold to overbought area of our stochastic RSI with a growth in volume to significantly push the price to the upside. We are of course targeting uh, our $1.7 resistance line. This is an area that was previously uh, support and resistance and we consolidated around this area for quite some time. So this is going to be a key area for us that we want to be getting our way back up to. So looking at today, I think today's going to be a really positive day for XRP considering where it is on our hourly um, and we'll look to continue to push to the upside. We have good motion on the daily. So as long as Bitcoin behaves itself, we should be in a pretty good recovery mode and we should start to see ourselves rise up nicely now obviously on that journey there are previous areas of uh, support and resistance that we need to be mindful of currently the the, the first one that we want to pay attention to is one dollar and two cent followed by one dollar four one dollar five one dollar six and one dollar seven now one dollar seven is the main one that we want to get and um, but i wouldn't be too surprised if we actually consolidate around one dollar five for quite some time as well Overall, um, everything's looking pretty good and we are looking for a pretty good recovery to the upside for XRP. So providing that the markets behave well, we should be in for a pretty good weekend, I would have thought, for um, for XRP overall. Guys, I'm going to leave the analysis there, but if you have found it useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, why not subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here. With this said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.